Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For the second part of the painting process of these two beautiful Maine Coon cats. Here on the side I've put the completed picture for you to refer to as we go through the painting process. And in the description below I'll have a list of all the paint colors that I'm using today. And as I go through the process here I'll describe to you the brush that I happen to be using at a particular time. And right now, for instance, I'm using the uh, 1 fourth inch Philip Grainer brush, and I'm using uh, Burnt Umber and Mars Black mixed together for the darkest part of the painting. I hope that you watched part one of the painting process of these two beautiful cats, and you were able to pick up some tips on the underpainting and some of the other details that we talked about, creating white fluffy fur and um, the background and all that so enjoy everyone thank you so much for joining us today the brush I'm using here is a half inch angle brush and I'm just darkening up the interior of these ear the interior <laughs> the inside of the ears so that I'll have a bit more to contrast um, the lighter little fluffy furs and hairs that I bring out in those ears and um, on the other side, I'm also going to darken that up a little bit too. And I'm using burnt umber and a little bit of titanium white to darken them up. And I'm just going to take that using the same brush around the top part of the nose, just bringing in a little bit of the brown color. Now here I loaded my brush with a little bit of the um, burnt umber mixed in with titanium white, mostly the white, and I'm just going to kind of brighten up these bright areas of the face. And here to that mixture, I've added a bit more of the titanium white to kind of make these, uh, this cheek area of the cat's face a bit whiter, but not completely white. With the two cats sitting right in front of each other, one behind one in front of each other, the way that they are, it's very important to have those colors contrast. Um, even though this is an actual, coming from an actual photograph, um, we have to make sure when you're doing a painting that you really show the contrast so the two cats don't just blend in together. The photograph that I'm using is a bit overexposed, so I'm having to kind of use my own um, creativity to make sure that, that they don't just blend in, the furs don't just blend in together. So you'll have to always be conscious of that when painting animals that are so close to each other. There has to be a contrast. A little bit later on, you'll see like here I'm adding um, in with the white, I've got a bit of uh, burnt umber and a little bit of raw sienna. And I'm going around and making sure that those areas where they need to be shadowed are showing up a bit brighter. A little later, I add a bit more to that as well. But that's very important because his chest is white and his face is white. So there has to be a contrast in between the two so that you can see the depth. And right now I'm just adding some bits of fur and pulling it into the darker part of the fur in the back. And um, now that section there, uh, when I loaded my brush again, I had a little bit more of the raw sienna mixed in there. And here I'm gonna be working on the nose a bit. So just going to lighten up the bridge of the nose and coming down to the front of the nose. 
with that darker color that I used on the ears, burnt umber and a little titanium white. So as you have it dark on the side, and uh, the sides of the nose and lighter on the top, that gives the nose dimension. Now I've lightened it up a little bit with some more uh, titanium white and I'm just kind of adding some texture to the hairs all around. Now I have to say this part of the painting process oftentimes may feel like it's redundant. Um, I might make a layer of dark and then I come over it with a bit of white or light and then I might darken up certain areas again. But what happens for me in this part of the painting process is I'm looking at my inspiration shot or my reference photo and I'm tweaking everything at this point. I'm pretty much from here on out, it's basically adding just those fine little details that make all the difference to the portrait that just really help it, uh, the portrait come to life. So that might feel redundant to you. And um, if you're able to do that in one step, fantastic. But for me, it's a lot of layering. And I feel like the layering is very important because it adds to the depth of the painting it adds to the interest of the painting when you know as you see the darker areas there you put that in and then you come back and add a little bit of light and maybe you see well i should have put a tiny bit more of the dark brown in there and just just one little stroke it all makes a difference um, without getting too completely photorealistic it just adds dimension depth and texture to the painting and here I've added a bit of titanium white to that mixture and made it lighter and just lightening up certain areas as I need them to be lighter on that portrait. Again, I'm going to uh, refer to the finished painting over there. So you can always kind of hop over there and look at that and feel free to print it out um, if you need to to refer to it if you want to paint along. Um, I hope you're enjoying this so far. Let me know if you have any questions. The brush that I'm using here is a quarter inch flat brush that is completely worn out, very much to my liking. So as you paint, I know that you probably have experienced your favorite brushes and they get worn out in a way that works perfectly for you because they tend to wear out for me due to the direction that I use them in. And this little brush for me has worn out on each side to a point. And it's a hard bristle brush. I'm sorry I don't know the make. I think I've had this from way back when I went to the Ringling School of Art and Design. And honestly, I do not even know the maker. Now I've switched. Right now I'm just using a 1 8 inch angle brush here. So definitely if you don't have a nice worn out flat brush like I had, this 1 8 inch angle brush works out terrific for this as well but I like the harder bristle brush for kind of scuffling in texture in the fur. I'm going around the eyes here with a brighter color of titanium white and a little tiny, tiny bit of burnt umber. So I've come across a little issue here. This picture is of course so, so overexposed, you know, that it's hard to see um, the top of his head. Said it, it looks to me like, and it's had me confused, and I figured, okay, the head goes here. Well, it keep, kept looking like it dunked down. So I took a look at another main coon cat, and, oops, sorry. Um, when I looked 
at the other main coon cat, I could see that it did dip down here and this was like a continuation of the ears. So I'm actually going to try something. I'm going to try doing this look to be like it goes down like this and then this connects to the ear here. go ahead and do it this way and I'm going to make little you know taller hairs here but I think that this actually comes down there down right there and goes higher connected to the ears so anyway I'm going to go with that I'm going to put some more details in and we're almost done here so what I've done here is I've taken a little bit of burnt umber and I've mixed it with water, just watered it right down, a tiny bit of titanium white and burnt umber and a lot of water to a very, very liquid consistency, just basically tinted water and made a glaze. And I'm going over the darker areas of the eye, the shadow underneath the lid of the eye and or the upper part of the fur over the eye and then just sort of giving a little bit of shadow onto the eyeball itself and around the edges of the eyeball. So now we'll work a little bit on Phil's eyes. Phil is the cat in the back, Tofi is the cat in the front. They're both male cats. I talked a little bit about them in part one. So here I am just putting some details in the eyes. I'm going to take a little bit of light here, go around that pupil, and then go back and load my brush with some dark, which I'm just using a lot of Mars Black and a little Burnt Umber, and I'm brightening up those pupils, darkening up the pupils, and the shadow areas around the eye. Eyes, Puro. So with a little titanium white mixed in with the parchment, I am bringing a little bit of the fluffy furs on the inside of the ear. There was a lot of fur and, and hairs on the inside of the ear, so ears, so I'm bringing that in here now. And I'm using my quarter inch Philip Grainer brush, just the tip of it, and every once in a while I turn it to the side to give the fluffy fur appearance. This is one of my favorite brushes. With a fine liner brush and a little titanium white mixed with the tiniest little bit of cad yellow, I'm going around and putting the highlights in the eyes.
And using my one quarter inch Philip Grainer brush, I've got Mars Black and Burnt Umber, and I'm bringing out some more of the dark areas of the, around the ears and where I see they need to be. So here with the Philip Grainer brush, I have on my brush a little bit of burnt umber and titanium white, and I'm adding the little areas where indents, where the whiskers will actually be coming out of. So on this quarter inch angle brush, I am applying a glaze that I made out of burnt umber, raw sienna, and titanium white, and water. And I'm just making sure that there's a big difference between the fur on Phil and the fur on Tofi in the front so that you can see where one cat's fur ends and the, others, the other cat's fur is behind that. So I'm just glazing that over, what I already have there, and um, making the, the difference between the two, so showing the contrast between the two. And I'm using that same color here on the mouth. When you do this and just glaze the color over the, the top like that, it actually does not cover the details that you put in the fur. It just adds the tone. And the lighter color I'm using here is the parchment and titanium white. And at this point, you want to just tweak all the little areas looking at your reference photo and going back and forth looking at it and then going to the painting and and just tweaking all those little uh, areas that need um, finishing So the more I studied the top part of Phil's head, I realized where it dipped down, and so I'm just sort of making that a bit fluffier in areas and um, where it actually comes up higher than the part that dips down. I found that very interesting. I, I never had ever seen that on any other cat besides the Maine Coon cat. And a lot of times the Maine Coons, which they are fabulous animals, um, they have that little pointy hair at the top of their ears, but these two didn't have that from what I could see in the painting, in the picture rather. Um, but this was so interesting how the top of the fur just sort of dipped down there. And um, like I said, I only had the one picture to refer to. We couldn't ask for another one because this was a surprise gift from my sister to her friend. And uh, we couldn't, you know, ruin the surprise. So anyway, I'm using my Philip Grainer brush here to bring in some little fine furs uh, using a burnt umber and titanium white all around the area of the face there. And the dark tigerish looking areas up at the top of their heads. Again, I was using Mars Black and burnt umber, which I'm also using around the eyes here 
to give that beautiful cat eye appearance. He looks so much like a tiger to me. So beautiful. Makes me want to paint a tiger, which I am going to do um, soon. I'm looking for a good picture. I want to paint a tiger and I want to paint a cougar for a couple of my YouTube tutorials. If that sounds like something that interests you, please leave a comment below and let me know. Also, I want to do a giraffe and an elephant on YouTube. So, just some of my goals that I thought maybe people would be interested in seeing and um, learning from, if, if at all possible. For the nostrils, I just used Mars Black. So by adding a little bit of uh, titanium white to the mix that we were using, I'm going over the top part of the nose and as you see when I put the lighter uh, paint on the top part of the nose it adds to the three-dimensional look of the nose so you have the sides of the nose darker and then just under the nose the shadow and uh, it helps that nose to stand out as three-dimensional it's exciting when you see these things happen in a painting don't you think I love the finishing of a painting, which I'm sure you all feel the same way as I do because then you start to see the, the painting really come to life and um, all your hard work starts to show up as something very rewarding. As you see me brightening up the areas here around the eyes and then uh, taking it up around the design on the top of his head. I'm using my Philip Grainer brush, my small Philip Grainer brush again, and I've got it loaded with titanium white and the parchment. starting to uh, pull in some of the
fluffy hairs and fine hairs inside the ears and I'm using my Philip Greener brush going in the flat direction and then also just the edge of the Philip Greener brush from time to time uh, for different textures of the different furs and um, the colors I'm using is parchment with titanium white. So here I'm using a stippling effect and I've got parchment and raw sienna mixed together here, little tiny bit of burnt umber and I'm just stippling that in in the top of the bridge of the nose and down on the top part of the nose in the center um, and also kind of bringing that up into those little tiger stripes, stippling around here on the cheek, upper cheek area just putting in some texture and really making the fur look real without getting too photorealistic of course but um, just basically adding some texture and color tone to the fur in different areas as I see fit so I think that you'll enjoy if maybe you already do enjoy the stippling effect uh, and what it does to the fur it just really gives a nice effect, I think. Very realistic looking. And this is a long handled quarter inch round. This is one of my favorite old brushes that the numbers have completely worn off of it and I, I don't even know who the manufacturer is because when I went to um, the Ringley School of Art and Design and took a course, they gave me a list of items to get and I just gave it to the, to the store there in Sarasota and uh, asked them to fill the order and they picked out some of the best brushes for me and paints and, and all of that and uh, I loved everything and I've stuck with those brushes all along and they're completely worn out so I'm sorry I can't tell you exactly what this brush is maybe if you'd really like to know I could do a little research about it but you probably have your favorite long handle round small round brush as well and when I say they're completely worn out I don't mean completely worn out to unusable worn out I mean completely worn out to uh, a really comfortable liking actually sort of worn out to the way that I've used them and they just wor work really well for me um, in the way that they've uh, you know kind of worn themselves down to the way that I use them I think I described that a little earlier in the tutorial uh, I, let me know if you all have that happen to you or you just the brush is not like any brush you can buy in the store because it's worn out to the point that it just works perfectly for you and um, I don't know if you could ever duplicate it again some people take scissors and cut them to make them just right for the effects that they want and uh, I have done that in the past as well but this is one of my favorite brushes
So with the parchment and titanium white, I'm really brightening up the top part of that ear. And at the same time, pulling in some more of the fine and fluffy furs inside the ear. So using my Philip Grainer brush with um, parchment, uh, raw sienna and burnt umber and water and I'm just sort of adding some uh, shadows under here under the face and under the chin area of the cat and then here and around in different areas where there's some dark furs and here just again between the two cats and pulling some fluffy furs into the side of the cat which I didn't continue there. So here I'm taking a liner brush and I'm using the parchment in titanium white to again accent some uh, more of the little fine furs on the outer part of the ear and then on the inside of the ears. What do you think? Aren't they looking pretty? I really liked how these cats turned out. They're such beautiful cats, Tophie and Phil, and um, the owner has already received the painting and she really liked it and she said it did look like her cats. She felt that um, their personalities were captured and to me that's the most important thing in painting a portrait for someone is that their, um, that their personality is captured in the portrait, in their eyes, and in the look that they give. And of course with cats, they have very distinctive fur, so that's important as well. Their characteristics and their lines and all that in their fur. So right now I'm working on a pet portrait of a dog. I don't think it's a specific breed of dog. It's a mixed breed, very pretty little dog. Um, the coloring reminds me of the last golden retriever that I painted here on YouTube. I think you'll probably think the same thing when you see it. And uh, that should be done and aired soon uh, after the, the owner receives the portrait. So um, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you'll join me for my next tutorial. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell for upcoming tutorials. Um, you'll be notified of the next one that comes out. So thank you again so much for joining me. I really appreciate you. And somehow I'm unable to find the footage of my painting the whiskers in on the cat. So the little whisker type hairs above the eyes and then the whiskers on the cheeks. And um, I don't have the footage for that. So. I will just give you a close-up view of the finished painting at the end where the whiskers are, are on there. So at this point, we just tweak all these little tiny details and uh, keep looking at your reference photo. Go to the Pit Collage app or an app where you can put the reference photo next to where you are at this point and look at the two together and see what needs to be tweaked and um, sorry for my profile of my nose popping in there <laughs> so this is an important part and of course your signature last but not least
So here is a close-up look of the whiskers that I put in. Little hairs above the eyes and the whiskers on the cheeks. And, um, and it's complete. I put them in after my signature and I lost the footage. And now that's a wrap. Here we are wrapping it up. Of course, this has already been sent, but I'm just showing you that we wrapped it up and sent it on its way. Special delivery, sent with love. Using extra effort to make sure that it's padded on the inside of the canvas and um, bubble wrapped and so that nothing bad can happen to it. And thank you so much for joining me, everyone. And I hope to see you in the next video. Take care and stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Bye-bye.